Hey guys, welcome to another No Swear Gamer video. This time I'm going to show you a retro junk box that I am building for the Atari.io forum website. Bunch of cool guys over there. I thought I'd do a junk box for them. If you don't know what a junk box is, is you take a large flat rate priority USPS mailbox, fill it full of retro stuff and retro related items, send it to a bunch of people. When they get a turn, they take out whatever they want and they put stuff back in and send it to the next person. That's how it works. So let's see how this box is getting started. First of all, it's mostly gaming, but I do have some non gaming items like this Bloom County book. So I got an old Bloom County book that I'm going to put in, old comic strip collection. Put that in the junk box. All right, next up, I got a poster. It's a Pac-Man poster, and it's it's a smaller poster. It's not like a full size, but it shows the insides of a cartridge. This is just a picture of what the poster looks like because the poster is actually wrapped up in that tube. I am building the box as we go. Next up. How about this? The Sega Genesis uh, Red Controller plug and play system with six games, including Sonic the Hedgehog 2. It's in the box. It is used, but it's in really good condition. I actually bought this originally myself, so I'm going to put that in the box. The biggest item in the box. It's a plug and play unit, so you don't have to have a system to play it. Now, in, right here, I have this little Atari tin. Actually, some Atari boxers came in it, but there's no boxers in this. I actually found this without the boxers at a garage hill. And I used to use it to hold Game Boy games, but the Game Boy games didn't like being in an Atari box, so I'm going to have to let go of it. But I did fill it with some other stuff. I got this uh, Chimichango's magnet. I have a couple little mini baseball card items here. Let's see what this one, like one of the old style cards. I have, uh, this is from one of the guys at the website gave me this with some games I traded. I'm not really a dragon guy and wasn't familiar with it. I guess maybe if it was like Smog from Lord of the Rings, but most, most of the time I'm not a dragon guy, so I'm going to let him protect the box. I have, this is just a uh, parachute cord bracelet. It's not really retro, but I thought I'd throw it in there because it's small. And in the box, I also have Missile Command and one-on-one -on -one basketball for the Atari 7800 Pro System. A really good game, really enjoy that game. So let's put everything back in here. If they'll fit, the dragon wants to fight the bracelet. This is gonna be a fun ride to the next place. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna stuff that all in there. All right, next up, this is a really cool item. It is a Space Invaders tie. Let's see if I can open the box here. It doesn't want to open. There we go. And you can see that it's all wrapped up. I don't want to unwrap it totally, but it's a very cool looking tie. Kind of a slender tie. I really like this when I got it. The problem is, is I realize I don't really wear ties. So since I don't wear ties, I thought I would just throw it in brand new. All right, let's see. Got some Nintendo games like Tetris, the classic. Blank Man, no, actually, uh, Captain Skyhawk. Spy Hunter and Silent Service. All right, got some Atari games. How about Zaxxon? Yeah, the Sega arcade hit brought home. Street Racer and Warlords, the classic paddle game. Uh, in this bag, I got a Sega Genesis 2 power supply. It also works with the Nomad, the 32X, and the Game Gear. So it's got some signs of use, but it still works. Oh, I got some more games. How about WrestleMania 2000 for the Nintendo 64? A beat up but still working NBA Action 94 for the Sega Genesis. And in every retro junk box, I like to put in something that's one of my favorite games. So this time it's going to be Real Sports Volleyball for the Atari 2600, a game I really enjoy. And it has a shark hidden in it, which makes it even better. I'm also going to throw in one of these. This is in a little adapter where you can attach to the cable to something like a Atari 2600 or 7800 or... A ColecoVision, I believe, or in television, you just hook that in and put it into the coax in the back of your TV. Also have a 
demo disc for Lemmings for the PlayStation Portable. Sonic 2 for the Game Gear. Let's see what else do we have here. Got a Sega Genesis poster. I believe it's a Jurassic Park on one side, but it shows games on the other. NBA Jam for the Sega CD. Got some books. How about some Garfield books? Garfield rolls on and Garfield uh, makes it big. A couple loose instruction manuals like Dark Cavern for the Atari 2600 and Demons to Diamonds. Uh, got some comic book and comic book related items like a comic price guide featuring the guys from Star Trek. The, the cover's loose, but it's a Batman comic book with the Riddler. Top Dog by Marvel. It's a Star Comics, which was like a, a kitty version of Marvel. Cover's also slipping off this one, but it's Kool-Aid Man right there. Number four with some interesting stuff inside. This was interesting. This was to help you stop smoking. They handed these out to kids at school, including me, uh, back in the 80s. And Spider-Man and Power Man and Storm take on some smoky guy. Here's a very cool fold-out poster. It is um, Han Solo in Carbonite. Folds out. I think that poster is really good. I just don't have anywhere to hang it right now. I have a What If comic uh, goes into like alternate re, uh, timeline. So it's like, what if the Fantastic Four had to fight Dr. Doom before they were the Fantastic Four? Have an old Atari game catalog. Really like these catalog logs. I scanned this in and has a bunch of games. And you want know, to talk about some great artwork. These these catalogs really do. Check out that. that. That's like one of my favorite artworks there for the game adventure. Very awesome. Uh, well, let's reach in. Got some other manuals like Guitar Hero, NFL, NFL QB Club 2002, Guitar Hero 2, Guitar Hero 3, Disney's Extreme, Extreme Skate Adventure, and NCAA Football 2005, and a miniature Spider-Man comic book. And just a cardboard cutout of a Nintendo controller. So that's the stuff I'm going to send in. It's going to go to about six guys or so. And then it's going to come back to me. So it'll be interesting to see what comes back to me. It's not a lot of guys. So I wouldn't be surprised if some things do come back to me. I guess that would really make it junk. But it'll be also interesting to see what I get back. The Atari.io Retro Junk Box made several stops around the country going from coast to coast, first stopping at Atari.io forum member Leo's house. There he took out a cool Kool-Aid Man comic book, a Garfield book, a Sega Genesis plug-and-play unit, Zaxxon for the Atari 2600, and Tetris for the NES. Following Leo, it visited forum member Storm Surge, who took out a cool Han Solo poster, a Black Geek Space Invaders tie, instructions to Dark Cavern and Demons to Diamonds on 2600, a Bloom County book, another Garfield book, Silent Service, and Spy Hunter on the NES. After that, it went to member Atari Brian, who took out Top Gun on VHS the way it was meant to be seen, a four-play adapter for the Sega Genesis, a cool Pac-Man poster, WrestleMania 2000 for the N64, James Bond 007 for the ColecoVision, a box copy of Altered Beast, Captain Skyhawk on the NES, and a Mario Mania Nintendo Player's Guide. After that, it went to Supermember Rosdauer, who took out Star Wars Episode I and GoldenEye, both for VHS, a Rocky Record Song, an Atari 2600 tin, a pack of Garbage Pail Kids cards, a Sega Genesis poster, Super Mario World on the SNES, an Atari belt buckle, NBA Jam on Sega CD, a Chimichangos magnet, and some D&D &D stuff along with a picture of Yoda. And finally, it went to forum member Rick who took out the Sega Genesis power adapter, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Leonardo, a Star Wars Pez dispenser, Galaga and Galaxian for the Game Boy, Snood for the Game Boy Advance, Looks like Bug Hunt and Football for the Atari 8-Bits, Zero Divide for the PlayStation, an Atari Keychain, NBA Action 94 for the Sega Genesis, and GoldenEye Rogue Agent for the PlayStation 2. Those were all the stops before me. Now let's see what happened when the box arrived at Nowhere Manor. 
Okay guys, so the retro junk box has made it back to my home all in one piece. It's in pretty good condition considering that it's traveled thousands of miles all around these United States. Let's go ahead and look what I got in the junk box. First, I wanted to show you what I got that I put in. So I guess this would really make this stuff junk. Actually, most of my stuff did get taken out, but some did not. I assume some would get would uh, come back to me. I did put over like, I think it was like 50 items and I got, I got a handful back. So I got this Atari tin back and inside was some of the baseball cards and this little bracelet thing, as well as Mr. Dragon, who apparently no one has a home for poor Mr. Dragon. So let's go ahead and put that to the side. Also got this little piece of cardboard NES controller, the cool Atari catalog. Got some manuals back, like for the Guitar Hero series. I think those are PlayStation 2 manuals. And Quarterback Club, Disney Skate It, NCAA Football, and this little mini Spider-Man comic book. And I also got back Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on the Sega Game Gear. I'm guessing a lot of people who have a Game Gear probably already have that game. And not a lot of people have working Game Gears today. Got some Atari games back, like Missile Command and Warlords, Ms. Pac-Man, Street Racer, and the great one-on-one -on -one basketball for your Atari 7800. And let's see, what else did we get? And I also got back some reading material, including the What If comic with uh, the Fantastic Four, a Batman comic book, a Top Dog comic book, and a old Star Trek cover of a comic price guide. So let's go ahead and take this stuff and push it to the side. And now I get to show you what I got that I didn't put in. So this is from some of the other contributors of the Retro Junk Box. Let's pull the box over here. This is really cool. I almost would want to say this for last, but it's a little Atari plug and play joystick keychain. Has two games on it. Has Asteroids and Millipede. It is used, it's open, but it's in great shape. And you can see on the back some of the other ones, like they made a paddle one. That looks pretty cool with Pong and Warlords and uh, Breakout on it. And another controller that had Centipede and Yars Revenge. But I'm definitely looking forward to that. I think that's very cool that it can be a keychain. Then you can plug it into your TV and play some Atari games as well. Someone sent a, an In-N-Out Burger sticker, which is, is kind of cool. I don't have In-N-Out Burger around where I'm at. Speaking of stickers, I got this uh, vintage Pac-Man sticker set. Someone sent um, Atari's arcade hits for the computer. So it has, let's see, Asteroid, Centipede, Missile Command, Pong, Breakout, and Tempest. I guess that's just uh, emulating the old arcade games. Not familiar with this game. It's a computer game, Fate, but it's brand new. It's never even been opened. So very interesting there. Here's a classic. Oregon Trail History by MECC for Windows 95. One of the guys, his wife makes these cool hats. It's like a it's like a winter hat for space invaders. So if you want to learn more about how you can get those, go over to the Atari.io forums and look for Mrs. Rosdauer who sells these things. So thank you, Mrs. Rosdauer, for that. Let's see what else that we get. How about a Rad Racer manual for the NES? A Double Dragon manual for the NES? I like manuals. These look like they're vintage. I don't know how old they are, but looks like some old Star Wars stickers. And speaking of stickers, how about an ET card? It looks like a sticker, like you can peel it off, and the back is like part of a puzzle. An owner's manual to the Atari 5200 Super System. This is my first game for the Bally Astrocade. It's a uh, Galactic Invasion. Never had a Bally Astrocade game before. Don't even have the system. Got a couple telegame versions of Atari 2600 games like Asteroids and Target Fun. So got two of those. How about Sim City Classics? Includes the original Sim City, Sim Earth, and Sim Farm. Very neat. Another manual for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 for the NES, a game that one day I'd like to own. And a manual for the 5200 version, a Centipede. That's the first manual I've had for an Atari 5200 game. I have some, I don't have a system, I do have some games, but I don't have this. 
I like plug and plays and this is like, I think this is a generic plug and play. There's no official name on it. So I think it's just kind of like generic games. So I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of generic games they got on here and how it controls. So I'm definitely going to check that out. How about some unopened pack of vintage cards like Batman, the second series, Raiders of the Lost Ark and black hole and it still has the gum inside you can feel that gum i wonder how it tastes today it probably would make you sick lots of little stuff in here like i guess this is ultraman club my first japanese game boy game and we had a couple little pokemon toy figures put in there uh generic army dude number 38 I, I I can't quite read this. It's like Streiser. I don't know Streiser or something, but I think this is candy, and I don't know how old it is, so I don't know if it's safe to consume. Food Fight for the Atari 7800. A great port of that game. Let's see. We got Odyssey 2 Speedway Spinout and Cryptologic. It's my second Odyssey 2 game. I just... Got another Odyssey 2 game uh, recently. And Donkey Kong from for the Intellivision, which some people would say is junk, so it belongs in a junk box. Super Breakout and Centipede for the Atari 5200. I, I already have a copy of Super Breakout, but I don't think I have Centipede, so that works for me. Got some reading material. Got a... A pair of Mad Magazines from, it looks like, one's from 80, one's from 78, including the uh, classic cartoons on the back. An old Justice League comic. This is funny. Someone put in this, um, it's part of a uh, Spider-Man comic, but that's the same one. Well, part of it is in that mini Spider-Man comic I showed you. And here's a Sonic the Hedgehog comic book. This is neat. This is kind of old from the editors of Consumer Guy Guide, uh, how to win at video games. So it's talking about old um, arcade games is what it's talking about, not home games. So you can actually see the machines. Those are some great pictures in there. So looking forward to reading through that. Um, Parsec for the Texas Instrument computers. Don't have a TI computer. And then, last but not least, a Calvin and Hobbes uh, book, which is really cool. I enjoy Calvin and Hobbes, so I'll definitely be read reading through that. So thank you, everyone who participated. Don't forget to check out Atari.io. That's right, it's Atari.io on your computer. They have a great forum site. I'm also a member of the Retro Junkies Network. Go check out the Retro Junkies. Dot com. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. You can so, uh, support me on Patreon as well. And let's see, is there anybody else I'm forgetting? If I am, I am completely sorry. But yeah, thank you guys for giving me a little part of your day. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Nose for Gamer. Take care, everybody.